the digital camera has made photography and video production more convenient, faster and also cheaper. On top of that, it also offers better image quality than old analog cameras. But how exactly does a digital camera work? Before we take a look at any camera, let's just take a look at how we humans perceive things. Our eyes rely on light in order to see anything. When there is no light, well, we can't see. We see things when light from a light source like the sun reflects off an object and enters our eyes. But of course, our eyes are also able to detect the color of an object. So how does that work? Well, sunlight and white light from other light sources actually consists out of many different colors. When this white light hits a red object, the red object absorbs all of it, all of those colors, except for the red light which reflects into your eye. This is why you see this as a red object. Okay, so that is basically how we humans see things. The camera relies on the same principle. Let's just say we've got a camera pointing at some object, in this case a small model car. The light reflecting of the car first enters the lens of the camera, which is the first part of the camera that we are going to discuss. The lens's job is to focus whatever the camera is pointed at as an image on the camera sensor, the part that we'll discuss later on. Now here's a schematic drawing of a single lens camera. You can see that the perfect sharp image of the object is formed where the sensor is located. However, if the camera moves closer to the object, the image is now, as you can see, virtually behind the sensor. So this means that the actual image that is now projected on the sensor is kind of a, a blurry, out-of-focus image. Focusing the camera means readjusting the position of the lens in order to get a sharp image. Now actually, cameras usually don't have just one lens like this. They have a whole bunch of them. This allows for better image quality and the ability to zoom in. Here you can see the image of the model car projected onto the sensor of the camera. It's upside down since that is what happens when you use a lens. Our eyes also see the world upside down, but luckily our brain automatically fixes this issue. The sensor's job is to capture this image so that it can be saved to an SD card. When you take a very close look at the sensor, you can see that on it there is a grid of tiny light detectors, aka pixels. The amount of pixels on the sensor is equal to the resolution of the camera. So if you have a camera that shoots 1000 by 1000 pixel images, there are 1000 by 1000 or 1 million of these tiny pixels on the sensor. Our example camera shoots at 100 by 70, just to keep things simple. But there is a problem. If you would take a picture of the car right now, it would look like this. It's a grayscale image, and that's because the pixels can only detect the brightness and not the color of the light. So how do we fix this? Well, a logical idea might be to give every single pixel the ability to detect color. This would mean that every pixel has its own red, green, and blue detector in it, because those are the three primary colors of light. The problem is that this is very expensive and impractical. That's why most digital cameras use a different method. On top of the image sensor, you'll find a filter that looks like this, called the Bayer filter. This filter consists of many tiny filters that are arranged in a pattern. There is a tiny filter above each pixel on the sensor. Green filters only let green light pass through, red filters only red, and blue filters only blue. There are more green filters than red or blue ones, because the guy who invented this system knew that the human eye is more sensitive to green, so he figured that cameras should also have this property. Now all of this means that the pixel that is located behind this filter will only pick up green light, since other colors won't get through the filter. However, the pixels still can't detect color, only brightness. 
but since the tiny filters are arranged in a predictable pattern, the microprocessor of the camera knows that there is a green filter on top of this pixel. So when that pixel tells the microprocessor that it has detected light at brightness 200, the CPU knows that it must have been green light at brightness 200. But after all this, we still can't take the picture. Here's an example of an image taken using a Bayer filter, and it looks terrible. And that's because each pixel can only have one specific color. So we're not there yet. We need to take an additional step called interpolation. This means that the camera is going to utilize mathematics in order to estimate what the actual picture should look like. Now, here's a very simple form of interpolation. Let's say we've got a pixel of which we want to calculate its red value. In other words, its red brightness. We can see that its neighbors have brightness 200 and brightness 150. A very simple form of interpolation would be to just pick an average value, so 175. Now, of course, a camera uses more complicated methods because this doesn't always work, but it is the basic idea of interpolation. After the interpolation has been completed, you get a real image, which can then be saved to an SD card. The same process is used for recording videos, but then it happens many times in one second. So there you go. Now you know how a digital camera works. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching.